right, here we are in a typical situation. We're gonna set up the green screen. I'm gonna walk through the lighting setup. Now I specifically chose to do this in a kind of messy garage because that may be what you're dealing with. You probably don't have a large dedicated green screen studio or a big open space um, with lots of room to move around in. So we're gonna show you a real world kind of setup here. So let's pop out the green screen and I'll show you how to set that up. All right, here we have the, uh, the green screen. Now this is a two-sided screen. This is from Digital Juice. And we're gonna use the green screen side, like we talked about before, because the green has a lot more data and it's gonna be a lot easier to pull the key than this blue sign. Now, the best way to do a green screen type situation is to use a painted wall because the paint that they have from companies like Roscoe is specially made so that it's very non-reflective. And that's good because you don't want the green reflecting back on to your subject because then you're going to have green on their edges and when you try to pull the key, you're gonna have problem with the edges of your subject. So this fabric is okay. It's not super reflective. It is a little bit, but what I like about this is it's kind of a, a thick a felt material and it blocks probably, I'd say, 95% of the light from the other side. It's especially helpful if you're trying to use this outside, which is definitely possible. But if you're inside, it's usually a good idea to block all of the windows that you can so you can really control the light. And that's what I've done in here in this garage. I've hung some black fabric up um, on the garage door, which is right there. And we've kind of blocked off most of the light coming in. There's a little bit of spill there, but it's gonna work for our purposes today, especially because it's coming from the side and behind the screen. So let's get this up on the background support stands and uh, see what it looks like. Now's a good time to talk about weighing down the bottom of your background support stands. Now it's always a good idea to use sandbags or shot bags when you're setting up light stands. Any light stand should have one on there just for safety because you don't want this crashing down and ruining other equipment. That's real bad. So I've uh, thrown a sandbag over here. I'm gonna do the same to the other side. And then what I like to do with these lightweight stands is adjust the base so that the sandbag is up off the ground. If the sand bag is sitting on the ground, then the weight really isn't pulling down on the stand. And that's what you want to keep these nice and stable. See now, these are not going anywhere. You can see as I put the two side Velcro straps on, the screen is really nice and taut. And that's good because if the screen has any wrinkles in it, um, that's gonna create shadows. And to the camera and to your green screen software, those shadows are going to be multiple shades of green and that's not good. We want one solid shade of green because that's gonna make your keys really fast, really easy and really clean. We're not gonna have to do things to clean it up later. So we've got that nice and tight on the sides. Now on the top, you can see there's a little bit of droop here and that's why I put this clamp up here. What I like to do is clamp the top and that gives a nice little pull up at the top now. Now this is nice and tight. And you could even go so far as to hang a bar at the bottom to pull it down, but that's pretty good right there. So these are the lights that I'm gonna to use to light up my green screen here. This lighting unit is a fluorescent fixture. It uses four 55 watt bulbs and the color temperature is around 5,000, which is uh, approximately daylight. Now you can use any lights that you want when you're starting out to light your green screen, but usually what works better is a soft light source. Now a soft light source is a large light source, kind of like when the sky is overcast. If you ever notice when the sky is overcast and you look down, you may not see your shadow. There is almost no shadowing. And this is because the light is coming from essentially all directions, especially if you're using fabric, you want a very even light, but you also want kind of a large light source so that any tiny little inconsistencies, any bumps 
or tiny little wrinkles aren't casting a hard shadow. If they are casting any shadow, it's very, very soft, very, very diffused and very smooth. If you use shop lights that you picked up at Home Depot or Lowe's or your hardware store, those would be hard lights because the actual light source is very, very small. Those are great for doing hand puppets, but probably not so great for doing a green screen. Now, one solution you could use is to shoot those through a diffuser. You can get a five in one diffuser collapsible. Um, they make them in sizes up to 42 inches, maybe even larger. And so if you shot two of those lights through a giant diffuser, it would essentially be making that giant circle a light source. And because that light source is huge in comparison to that tiny light bulb, the shadows would be nice and soft. So that's what we're gonna use here. And we'll get these into position and see what it looks like. What we wanna do is focus our light on the screen and to get these two lights, if you're using two lights, and it would be a good idea if you did because it's nearly impossible to light this screen or any screen for that matter up with one light and get it even. You can see that already we have a hot spot over here and then it's kind of falling off towards the other side. But a great way to start in the setup of these lights is to get both lighting fixtures kind of equidistant away from the screen, kind of symmetrical. We want to get them as close to the green screen as possible, but we can't get it like this. You can see if we do this, we have way too much of a hot spot over here. We can start to see some of the tiny wrinkles in the green screen here. That's not a very good setup. So bring it out just a little bit. So I'm going to get this about the same distance away. So how do you know if your green screen is going to be bright enough? Now these bulbs, these uh, lighting units here, these can, these have multiple outputs. Now the lights you may be using may have a way to vary the intensity and they may not, but how do you know if this is going to be bright enough? Well, the only way that you can know for sure is to shoot some tests with your camera. And then you bring that into your editing application and you use some scopes to determine the brightness and how even it is. You wanna shoot for between 60 and 70 on the Luma scope, and that will be enough kind of green juice to be able to pull a super easy and quick key. The other way that you can kind of get an idea of the evenness is to use a light meter. Now, if you don't have a light meter, you can use your phone. All right, so here's a quick demo of the light meter application for my iPhone. Now, there's a bunch of different light meter applications out there. This one's just called Pocket Light Meter, I believe. And here's how it works. You have your ISO setting, you have your aperture setting, and you have your shutter speed. Now, you can use this to actually set exposure for shooting video. So for instance, if you are shooting at an ISO of 160 and a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second, it would tell you to expose this right here, it's F5. If we move over here on this side to get a proper exposure, we'd be looking at around F7.1. Now, this meter is fairly accurate. It's not going to be as accurate as a real dedicated light meter, but what this does show you is a relative kind of exposure value for your green screen. So your light meter will give you an indication in one third of stops. That's what I have this set up for. You can have it do more, but a one third is the least it will go, which means it's the smallest amount, which will tell you the smallest variance in light. So I can use this on your green screen. As you can see here from my scene, we have some super dark areas right here in the shadows. And then we basically have kind of a ramp up of light because the light source is, is over here. So what this will tell you is that for instance, right here, we're reading an F8, and over here, reading at an F3.5. So in order to even this out, we'd have to even up our light a good amount. Now, oh, what if I move it like this? Now we're reading at F5 over here, F4.5 over here, that's not too bad. There we go, F5 and F4.5 going to be pretty impossible to get this exactly right with just one light. But you can see how that can can aid you because to your eye, 
that kind of looks relatively even, at least portions of it do. And you'll find when you're lighting your green screen that you'll see areas that generally look like the light is very even. But when you use a tool like this, it's going to be just a little bit more accurate than your eye is going to be. And it will help you set the exposure a little bit better so you can make sure that you have at least an even amount of light. And like I said, you're going to have to pull some test clips into your editing application and use some scopes, which we'll go over later, to determine if you have the correct level of brightness on your screen. But that's how the pocket light meter works for the iPhone. Okay, so it looks to me like the center of the screen needs a little bit more light. So how we can fix that is adjust these uh, barn doors just a little bit, maybe even move the position of the lights in just a hair. The reason why you want to get this as even as possible is because if you start from something that's very, very evenly lit, you are going to have a really good experience pulling the key. It's going to be fast and it's going to be easy. So let's check out how to light up your subject. <laughs> 